seen some complications coming up with my Wi-Fi from the door when I try to load this video up. All right, first things first. My name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Supreme Ambient Light Rejection Screen Paint using Ambient Light Rejection Technology Gain. So last couple of days, well not last couple of days, last right, yesterday, I've been incorporating uh, the Supreme Black and Blue, Black and Blue, funny, Black and Blue um, Screen Paint into 3D mapping to see how it reacts. Now, already from experiencing it from a gray screen or a white screen, uh, one of the problems I noticed that the black levels don't pop as well when using it with the gray or white screen. Also, too, we're going to be on Monday morning, we're going to start development on the digital version of that technology that will leave the surface intact without coloring it black. So, I've been painting just all kinds of strange objects, especially um, working on pinpointing certain areas where I want them to um, project. So this particular item right here will allow me to project here or here or here or here or here. It will allow me to be a select certain areas that I can basically home in on performing uh, better um, uh, mapping uh, technology or, or capabilities. Over here, which I was curious, somebody brought up a question about using rear projection. So this is a rear projection surface. That's one over there. We're going to 3D map that one and that one. This right here is the wallpaper screen. I got to go out back and I got to cut these because I got a tattoo on each side so the screen can stand up independently and I can curve it because I want to see if I can actually map a curved screen. Now also too, I figured out something really interesting yesterday because yes, there is downloadable content that you can already use. But I found out how I can put my own content on here and use my own stuff. So I go on the internet and I can download just about anything I want, feed it back to that machine and push it right up on that image right there. So it's got me thinking, could I move a file the size of a movie? So that's what I'm working on next. I'm just going to get some unlicensed a movie that I can basically move from one folder to the next. Because this thing does have one terabyte of solid state drive. Uh, for memory, so uh, that should be pretty interesting. So, hey, how you doing? How you doing? All right, so let's begin firing. I know it's early in the morning, but you got to understand, you don't sleep when you have this kind of equipment because my mind was already racing as it is when I was working with the stuff I had now. This takes to a whole nother universe right here. So this gives me a chance to play around. So let's fire this baby up. Make sure we go through in the morning. I got to get me a section. And on top of that, today I will be actually working on the gaming room upstairs. I got a mini arcade room I'm actually working on. I've already ordered the lights. I got the LED lights for the room, the LED lights for the screen. I mounted in the screen. I already had the projector there, so I'm not worried about that. I got to order a new lamp for the projector anyway. And I ordered another PC. So this is my work PC right here, which is a Dell 7010. I ordered another Dell 7010. And I ordered it, um, a GTX um, 16, no, no, 10, 1050 uh, graphic card DDR5 with four gigs on it of memory. So I ordered that right there uh, for my gaming uh, machine that I'm actually building. And that is going to be for my Steam account for the arcade system upstairs. So let's fire everything up. I got some really cool graphics offline. So let's see, fire for a projector, 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 and let's turn the computer on. Now my gaming PC that I'm working on, it's going to be completely wireless. I already have the adapter. I'm just waiting for the rest of my parts to get here. And we're firing everything up. I love this. I got to build me a better station than having this in the middle of my, my living room. But right now, this is where it's going to be at. All right. Sure my mouse is operating. Oh, that's me, mapping 3D boy, 77. All right. Um... Um, see if I remember this one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, there we go. It's over in there. Now that's all good to go. There's a software over here in the corner. Privacy update. I'll do that later on. I'm going to kind of put it right now. I'm going to play around with this a little bit. 
So I'll go turn on the system right here. So the lights come on right there. This is for the three mapping equipment. Now, like I said, my earlier videos, I had some really, it wasn't, I, I just tell you right now, it is by, it's, 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 it's by Tron it really is, because it is not that hard to actually get, get it up and going. When can you send to Norway? Um, we can only send to Norway until, or any place overseas, until PayPal is the restrictions. Right now, PayPal has restrictions. We can't ship overseas. Um, when we first started noticing it, the icons were popping up. The messages in our emails were telling us that, uh, hey, look, uh, there could be a possibility that you may not be shipping overseas anymore. And eventually it did happen. So we just can't ship overseas. It's all up to PayPal or when they decide. Uh, when they're going to basically lift those restrictions. Till then, uh, if you want to order our product, you have to uh, see if you have a relative or somebody within the United States that you can have it shipped to. Um, then they can, we can ship it to them, and then they can ship it to you. Now, uh, one thing I was telling you about, if you do decide to get this program or get this, this hardware, uh, however, in program, um, it will require you, it will say it requires, but you don't need to, to go in and register your name and email and set up an account, which you don't have to because even if you try to, it's just not going to work anyway. And that's one of the problems I had with it when I first started off with it, is that it, it, it just, you just can't get in, period. Bottom line, it's just how it's going to happen. You're going to go in, you're going to set up your email, you're going to put your password in, it's going to ask you to verify your information, you verify your account. You're going to go in and verify your account. You're going to go back in. You're going to log in. It's going to say that your password is incorrect. It's going to do this every single time. So then you're going to think, okay, so how am I going to get in here to set this up to get access to the library? Um, that's another thing, too. The um, the app is, which I'm calling is a bit slow loading, but we're, after you get up and running, it's good to go. So after you go through that, then you realize that you don't have to. See right here, the login? You don't have to log in. All you got to do is hit skip. And there you go. This is all you need to see. This is what they don't tell you because see the thing when you watch the um, the info commercials on it, it just seems like you just plug in and play. No, it's not like that. It's nowhere near like that at all. Period. I'm showing you exactly how it's going to be if you get this. So don't get frustrated like I did. Don't lose your 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 temper like I did. You know, just I'll show you why you know, how to do it, and then it'll be much smoother transition. So there's a few things you have to do in order to get it up and running that they will not tell you about. So, bottom line, they're going to ask you to sign into your account. You're not going to be the sign into your account, period, because it will never, ever accept your password. Maybe it might work on your end, but it didn't work on mine. And a few people that are actually are on the, um, the Facebook uh, group site where they actually have these at, where people talk about them, they've had the same issues, too. A few people had issues, too, with it. All right, so you can just skip that all together and don't deal with that at all because it's still going to give you access to the library and all the editing equipment everything you would need from there, so you're good from there. Um, another problem you're going to run into is your device. So your device to here, depending on what device you choose, has a serial number at the bottom of it, and it has a nickname. You'll see my nickname pop up. Everybody gets a nickname. It could be Frightened Grasshopper. It could be Running Dog. It's just something weird that they put there that you have to, um, you have to basically register your box. If you don't register your box, what's going to happen is when you turn it on, you won't see that. This will be completely blank. So when you turn it on, the first thing that's going to pop into your mind is what the heck is going on? Because when you watch the info commercial or the commercial show of the guy setting it up, he just turns it on and all this just pops onto the screen automatically. It doesn't tell you that you have to go in and you have to register all this stuff. And I'm pretty sure it's in the manual detail, very, very detailed manual, which I will show you that you literally need a magnifying glass to see everything that's in there. But they will give you a web address that you can go to, which will be this place right here. And that will allow you to start registering your equipment. Now, if this does happen where it says that your device can't be found because it said that several times when I tried to register my equipment, my device couldn't be found, it's found the first time. That error message is just there for the sake of just being there. So just completely ignore it. Because if it wasn't, it would not pop up here, which you'll see mine pop up. Now, once all that goes in, Turn the system off, turn it back on, and you'll get that. That's the uh, scan. Now, here's where it gets a little interesting. So, okay, let's go in here and let's hit new projects. That's where we want to hit right here. New projects. Don't, don't bother with any of this. That's all you just need to hit new projects. And then where it says new projects, this is where you can go in and you can name your file. You can give a name like, I don't know, uh, 3D Dinosaur, whatever you want to name your file. But I'm not going to name it anything. I'm just going to leave it at new project, and you just hit create. 
You just wait a while, don't touch anything. It'll load up. All right, so there I am right there. Chipper Woodchuck. That is the name on the bottom of my box. That's what your, your name of your box will be. I am officially online, as you can see. You got two options for online. You can run it through Wi-Fi, or you can run it through the hard line. I run it through the hard line because my Wi-Fi is a bit buggy. I would game on my Wi-Fi with no problem doing this kind of stuff right here. No, I wanted to dedicate a dedicated line. All right, so click on that. Hit continue. Now, it camera should come up. And hopefully it does. Because this is one of the issues I had with this. Um, with this um, and there we go. Yep, we started again today. Yep, this is one of the problems that you will run into. The camera will not be reading, will not read from time to time. And there we go. Already from the door. So this is what I'm explaining to you. It has bugs. It has some, some bugs in it. You're just going to have to figure out how to get around it. I'm going to have to go in and do a quick scan because now I can't use this at all. It's not going to work. So that's, you're going to have to come out of this all together. You want the full scan to work. But see that little option that pops up right there? That's one of the major problems that comes up. So your camera is not reading right now. So what they want you to do is hit this troubleshoot and go to this little selection of all this stuff that if you can't see your camera, it's not scanning. They advise you to go in and unplug your camera and plug it into your computer to update the drivers and the firmware, which is actually uh, outdated. Mine's already been done. So I'm going to have to do a, because um, since that's not running, I'm going to have to go back and do, see if we can do a, and this is, like I said, it's one of the things you'll have to go through. A few people are saying, okay, well, I've seen in your video. You were freaking highly upset one minute, and you were good to go the next minute. Yeah, because it was working for a while, but when I first got it, it was a freaking, it was a nightmare on wheels. It was a freaking nightmare on wheels. It was actually really extremely hard to get in there and get things to work because things were just so freaking buggy. But I love it. It works amazingly. It does. Just if it didn't have these little bugs in it, it would be fantastic. It would be absolutely perfect. Now... On a good day, which was yesterday, I got it to run all day with no problem whatsoever. Eventually, I turned it off, so I don't know if basically if that caused a problem or what. It shouldn't be having this problem at all for a piece of equipment that you paid $924 for. And yeah, that little box and that little camera is $924. What is worth it if you can get it to function right. So we'll go back and again, camera's definitely there because as you can see right there, it's reading there. So another way around that, if the full scan is not working, you can go into quick scan. That's another option you can go into if you can't get your full scan to work right. If you do full quick scan a few times, then somehow, some way, the, the, um, the full scan. So we'll go through it again. So if I can't get, the, if I can't get it to activate, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into quick scan. Oh, man. So this is the one, only problem I have with it. And your device is definitely there because if you go into live stream, which it does have a live stream, it will pull your camera up. So if it doesn't load up oh, and you'll go through that too i'm glad you guys are seeing all this these are some of the things that you will go through your page will completely shut down on you and you have to reopen it again so this is some of the stuff i'm telling you from the door that you will go through this is the stuff they do not show you when you watch those uh little commercials and people showing off their items they don't show you this part this is the part i'm showing you that this will actually happen to you because what I saw in the review, see right there, I got to report the problem. In the review that I saw, I saw the guy come in, hook up the HDMI, because your HDMI is running through your device right here. It's not running anywhere near the computer. This is why you need the monitor. Because you need the monitor to be to see what's going on the computer because your projector is actually hooked up to that little box right there. And then that's hooked into the camera and into the internet and all that other good stuff right there. So you need all that to begin with. 
but they don't show you all that. They show you the guy coming in, taking everything out of the box, plugging everything up, turning it on, and it comes on. You know, when you first turn it on, nothing comes up on the screen. The screen is completely blank. You got to register everything. They don't show you that part. So that's why I said buy at your own risk. There we go. Now my camera pops up. So you got to play with it a little bit. It has bugs in it. It does. Once you get it up and going, you, the more you work at it, the less bugs you will run into. There was at one point when I first started this, I must have spent two hours trying to get this to pop up. Yeah, it, it's trying. It can be trying, but you just got to pursue. If you, if you go ahead with it, trust me, it's a wonderful piece of equipment. They just should have did a lot more research. They should have just worked a little harder getting all the kinks out. All right, so now we got our scan right here. We're going to scan those objects behind it right there. Alrighty, now I've already tested this on a white screen and I tested it on a gray screen. It doesn't come out too well. This is the reason why when I watched a lot of videos on it, the people that were using these things were doing it in the dark because if you try to turn the lights on, which I'm using right now, the projector or the images will wash out and fade. It reacts the same way as if you're using a projector. Using a projector on a white screen, what's going to happen when you turn the lights on? It reacts the same way. But at least on a projection surface, you're actually projecting it on a surface that's designed for projection. Keep in mind, when you're projecting on a surface, your wall is not designed to be a projection screen. Your figure is not designed to be a projection screen, and neither is your car. So that's why we're developing that visible technology, because that visible technology will allow us to coat the surface without changing the color or the, or the, or the item that you're going to be coating it onto. But right now, we're just using the black. And that's why I can pull my screens up, because these screens are ambient light rejection. They're designed to take in light. So anything I coat this on, the projector is going to react to it. All right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to go in and we're just going to hit scan. And it is going to begin to scan. Now, this is another area you will bump into, the infinity scan. You could bump into an infinity scan where you see how the pattern's changing. It's scanning the object right now. If it stops and you get a little icon at the top that says, gives you your information like, okay, this is your network uh, name. Uh, this is the box you have. This is the name you register under. And it's not scanning anymore and you still have this stuck in the middle that means your scanning has paused but for what if you look at the prices for uh 3d mapping what it costs it is extremely expensive extremely expensive the programs that i was looking at before i found this company was twenty three hundred dollars that's for the program alone 23 grand. No, 20, 20, 20 grand, 2,000, 3,000. 2,300 dollars. That's what it cost you. Altogether, with this was 924 dollars. Of course, you're going to have to buy the projector and the computer. It's going to be optional. So I've got all kinds of weird ideas. I'm made like, what? No, I got a screen door downstairs that I coated with their technology. I'm going to see if I can do a screen door. I am going to do a black projection screen. A black, a black uh, we have a technology we developed. It's a, a front and rear transparent black screen paint. And I'm going to coat that, put the projector on the opposite side. And then we're just going to scan and punch an image right through it. That's the scanning, 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 scanning. So what I did was I went online yesterday, designed me a folder, and I'm going to upload my own stuff. Because I got stuff in the library, but I chose to get my own stuff. I think it's called GIFs, so that's called GIFs, G-I-F-S, or whatever it's called. You can download those. You can actually save those to your file. You can actually upload those and run them on here. And also, too, I know there's a couple of video samples on here, which I'm going to see if I can transfer a video sample. The scan is going to be a bit. The full scan takes a little bit. Also, too, it has something called uh, floor masking. Now, floor masking, which means you can have a projector over top like this, and you can project it down onto the surface. So say if you wanted to basically stack a whole bunch of boxes up, and you wanted to basically just uh, 3D map something down on top of those boxes, you can do that. Um, there's two different forms of scans you can do on here. You can do one for the box. You can turn your rug into a lake. Just whatever you want to do, or if you want to scan it into
but so far, like I said, since I've been working with it, I've gotten very little bugs. Um, the more you work with it, the less the bugs actually occur. When you first start off, depending on some people actually were able to get theirs going off out of the gate. There we go, right there, processing. Some people get theirs done out of the gate, and other people had to struggle, like I had to. And some people just their stuff didn't work, and they had to take it back and get something, get get a um get a replacement. All right, we're done. All right, so there's my object right there, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're going to get some red because you got to use red to create the the surface. I like to use the magic the magic uh wand. Extend this up a little bit. Come back in here and grab this right here, and we're just gonna color all this in red. You wanna make sure you just get all that in red. Do not color outside the lines. Unless you want your scan to show up someplace else that you don't want it to be at. So I'm putting it everywhere where I have black 12 at. So where the 12 black screen paint is at, that's where I'm putting it at. I got that song called Sweet Caroline stuck in my head. All right, um, I'll trim this up a little bit. There we go, that's good. So you just wanna make sure you cover everything in red. Let me open this up just a little bit. So I can get areas that I can't get. There we go, I wanna cover all this up in here. All right, so we're done. So I got this one area down here that I hit. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna shrink this a little bit and come in here and remove this bottom half right here because this is gonna hit my table in the back, which I don't wanna hit in the table in the back. I wanted to just hit where I just scanned that. Just a little bit more. Just changing my brush size. There we go, because I'm gonna make sure this is nice and even at the bottom. So anything you hit that's coming up in red is gonna get scanned. There we go. Get all that up real good. I think I got a little spot right here. I'm gonna go clean it up. There we go. All right, so that's all done. So now what we got to do next is we're gonna go over to change and uh, create a surface. All right. Now there's your all your little pinpoint dots right there showing you where your mapping is being scanned out. And then after that, you're done. Now you got two options. Library, or you can go into your library. I'm going into my library. So I'm going to drag and drop an image, which means I'm going to go into all the stuff I picked out, which I think I want to do this one right here. I'm going to do that one right there. These are all the different cool stuff that I got online. This is stuff you can just grab. Just, I put in like 3D outer space gifts, um, stuff like that. Weird stuff, fish tank, stuff like that I might want to check out. But I think I'm going to do the face. No, no, if I do the face, it's going to cover the whole thing. I, just, I should have did the face on the flat one. So I am going to grab, oh, yeah, I'm going to grab this one right here. I'm grabbing this one right here. We're going to do that one. So I'll just take that. It's going to show up right here. So what you want to do is click on this and then hit this right here. And then there you go. That's what you're going to see when it comes on. So now we're going to come over here. A little bit. All right, so it's going to have two scans on it. All you got to do is come over and hit publish. All right. So you're going to have two scans. One's going to be the first one, and one's going to be the second one. This is my own content that I was able to pull off the line just to play around with. There you go. Oops, bumping stuff with my stand. And it just projects to the box and the box only. It doesn't go anywhere else.
this is why I like using, this is why I think the black technology is better for these types of application because like I said, if I'm using a gray screen or white screen, you're not gonna be able to see any of the contrast levels. I said contrast plays a role in everything. I mean, literally everything. I keep telling people, you have to have uh, that dark technology to be to produce those amazing contrast levels. But this screen is 100% black. So not only is gonna have the ability to be able to pull the black levels, which you're seeing stand out on the, on the boxes, but it also too is going to give the ability of having bright, beautiful colors. And a full environment. So let's take our lights out. Let's get the lights out. Nice little special effect right there. And I got the boxes. I actually pushed the boxes inward so I can actually scan here and here to see what I can scan in. So I got the boxes pushed inward. So this is my own stuff that I've taken offline. Let's see what I can get away with. Now. Let's see if we can scan a video file. That's what I'm interested in. If I can scan an entire video file. All right, so same procedure as before. And I'm gonna do some, uh, next week when I come back on again, I'm gonna do a um, piece of, uh, we're gonna do a piece of plexiglass coated with our technology. So let's go over here real quick. So when you want to get out of this, if I want to name this, you can this if you want. You got a terabyte of hard drive space. I'll actually have hard drive space to basically save all your goodies on. So if I don't want to save that, which I don't, I'll just go and hit my file at the top here and just put in new projection, new projects. This will cancel out that one over there. So we'll discard it. And it'll cancel out and my scan will come back on. I don't really like to give a name to it. It doesn't make a difference. See, once you get once you get it going, that's it. You don't have to worry about that camera knocking off like that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go in. I'm going to grab another file of mine because keep, I'm just grabbing what I have in my selection. Um, bring it over here so you can see this for yourself. So they don't show you this part. I'm lying you right now. You buy this, you will not. This will be the only video that will show you this because I watched all the videos on everybody who had these, and no one was showing this at all on how to get it set up. They're just showing you how pretty it looks and all that. Like, well, how the freak do you set it up? How does it even start? What are you hooking? Actually, one guy showed you hooking it up, hooking everything up. But when he did his review, he just hooked it up and boom, it came up, which means he did all the registration. Everything was already done. You don't realize you have to go through all that first. All right. So in here, we got the full screen over here, right here, right here. We got camera, camera. These are camera masking, mask and stuff like that, you know, surface mask. You know, if I want to do my floor, I can actually mask out my entire floor if I want to do it that way. And have like like an earthquake, like the whole entire floor coming out from underneath me. So yeah, I need me an all black room. That's funny, I need an all black room coated in all black technology that I can just go in and have fun with all day. Just experiment on stuff. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go scan again. we are gonna scan. This is gonna be coming in, so it's gonna scan everything in the room. Now if I, mind you, if you have your projector pinpoint it like you shrink it down to pinpoint the screen it's only going to scan what's on the screen that's it if you expand the image you can scan everything in the room so if i pull this projector back to the next room back i can basically scan the entire room and just paint anything in the room which i'm going to do i think i'll do that on the um uh probably uh this week i'm going to just scan the entire room I think my other screen should be just about dried. But I want to do it. I think my next, I'm going to do a piece of plexiglass. I'm curious how it's going to react to being scanned on a piece of plexiglass. Another thing I'm actually interested in trying to find out that, okay, usually if you project on a piece of transparent surface, you have to do it with the lamp glare. Are you going to have the same reaction here with the lamp glare if I scan it? All right, so it should be so scanning. The only other thing is flashing back and forth. That means it's scanning. Also got a giant 3D head that pulls out and moves around. I'm going to put that in there too.
And then after this, we'll do the sheet of plexiglass because I'm curious. That should be, should be, it should react the same way. I should be able to put an image on it and scan through it. But this one, I'm going to try to, this one, this one, I'm going to pull a video file. That is my uh, um, alarm going off. I'm supposed to be up at 6 o'clock in the morning every day, but eventually I'm getting up earlier than that now. Still scanning. You got to be kind of patient with the scan. They do have something called a quick scan. If you want, you just it goes through in no time at all. It's not as refined in detail. You can also to go in as an editing wise. You can change the brightness and stuff like that. You know, maybe you have too much light in the environment. You do all that stuff with it. Um, another thing too is when those little dots come up on your screen, those are the areas of scan points. You can actually move those. So say if you're scanning something that has a really difficult kind of shape to it, like a plant, you can actually move those to fit exactly where you want them to go. Boom. We're already up and going right there. So now we're going to just going to color our surface in red. You don't have to color the surface in red every time if you don't want to. It just gives you a much more, uh, detailed scan. So we're gonna hit the magic wand over here. Magic wand. Bring this up a little bit. And we're just gonna basically start coloring in our surface. So let our surface color up. All right. So all that's done. So next we're going to do is going to create a surface. If you do, there are your little scan points right there. So your scan points right there. Then we're going to hit done. I'm going to go over into here and I'm going to search what's in my category. I'm curious. I'm going to go check out videos. I'm going to see if I can actually, we got a video in here. No video. I have a video. They always have some kind of like um, the operating system. I mean, in here they always have some kind of like sample or something. Let's go into pictures. This is what we got in pictures. In pictures. So I'm gonna have to download a video or something. That's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to, I'll have to get me a video download, but it should be a video or something in here. All right. So I'm just gonna have to go in and download a video somewhere. That's what I have to do. I just want a short video. I know exactly where I can go. There's a website I know where I can go. I can get me a video from. Right, no, 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 no. All right, so the computer's brand new, there's nothing on it at all, period. All right, no problem. I'm just going to go into pictures. I'm going to grab Spaceman because that's what I need in my folder. And let's see. These are all, these are stuff I just picked up online. You see if I can, how much stuff. Oh, the water. Oh, that was a, that's a pretty cool one right there. But I should do that on a long, oh, I can just scan a really long, oh, that'd be sick. That'd be really, really sick. I can just do one long strip of a screen all the way across and just do a waving water all the way across it. Well, it's down. I got to do that now. That just popped up in my head. Oh, I can't. I ran the scan. I can't do it. I forgot. I already ran the scanner. You can't change it once you run the scan because it's mapped out for that section. So I can't do it. But I'm doing it on the next one. I'm going to just do one long. I'll take the boxes. Put them along and just do a whole ocean wave. Because that's what that is. This is an ocean wave right there. All right. Um, let's bring the galaxy in. Let's see if we can do something pretty cool. I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to do the grid board or... No, no. I'm going to do this one right here. We're going to do this right here. All right. I'm going to grab that one. All right. And then that's where it's going to be at the bottom right there. So just hit that. And then you just insert. And that'll show you what it looks like. But that's what it's going to look like when it actually uploads. All right, so we're going to come in here and we're going to hit publish. Like I said, it's very easy to use. You know, it's not intimidating. You know what I mean? If you do Photoshop, you can do this pretty easy. So we're going to go through two scans. First one. And I think I think that's the second one. Should be going through. There we go.
But now I gotta do the wave, I gotta do the ocean wave. pretty good with it all right if you want to practice your scanning what you want to do is you want to basically um you want to basically uh practice on objects first what you want to practice on now see it's hitting here but you can't see it like i said it's better it works better with our black technology that's why we only coding all boxes with our black screen paint All right, now we got to do the ocean wave. We got to do that one. We have to do the ocean wave. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. All right, and I'm going to see if I can do it. I can take this. this way. I'm going to have to take it. Take it. Yeah. Kind of building with digital Legos. That's what it feels like. And then we're going to change that out. And we're going to do the wave ocean on that one. All right. So let's come over here. Start again. This is going to be pretty cool to look at. All right. So let's go and get a new file here. A new project. Um, yeah, we're going to just that one. Let's get rid of that. Name. Go. Let's do our scan. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got an extra HDMI port on the back, so I'm kind of curious what that's for. Like, can I plug something into that and like project that? That'd be kind of cool if I can scan something and project my gaming system onto something. That would be cool. That'd be really cool. Oh, I forgot the computer. That's one thing. The computer has a DVD burner on, which I completely forgot. So I can just burn a movie. Right onto here and just basically upload that from here to there. So we're gonna do an ocean wave on that box right across. It's a wave of water. Shh. It's gonna be cool to look at. But the real fun it's gonna be is when I get the projector set up upstairs, because I want to set up a projector where I can scan downward. Now, the reason why I chose this little kit right here, because this kit will allow me to allow me to be able to confirm. Just about any projector. Do not use this on for knock-ons. Off a knock-off projector. I mean, you go out and you spend thirty bucks or forty bucks or fifty bucks for a projector, and then spend nine hundred twenty. Uh, don't do that. It, it, trust me. It, the um, the best. Um, it does some four K. For those who want to four K, it does a bit of four K upscaling, but it's best to use with ten eighty P projectors. But um, that's what I'm gonna do. I want to do. I want to start stacking boxes upward and scanning down on top of them. That's what I want. If I do what I'm gonna do. Good sonic display, or maybe like a, a waterfall with, with flowers popping up. That'd be pretty cool. Ooh, or a giant black hole or vertex. Oh, that's great because I got a black wallpaper screen downstairs right now that I'm basically going to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I might be doing that this week. I'm gonna do that in the office. I got enough room in the office to set that up. Oh, set me up a nice little workstation in there for working with this. All right, so scanning. I think what I'm gonna do now because we have that we have that plexiglass that can be submerged under water, that coating. I'm gonna see if I can actually scan through water. That's what I'm saying. Everybody who has these things, they're not doing anything crazy with it. 
they're just taking bunches of objects and just scanning them over and over again. I'm like, really? That's all you guys are doing with this? I did a vortex screen yesterday where I actually turned the projector on its side and actually were able to project in portrait mode and did a vortex, like some kind of a hologram vortex. Um, I'm doing a screen door painted with our technology. I'm pretty much going to be coating a lot of stuff. See what I can get away with. Cardboard boxes, but then again, they don't have black technology, so you know they're just going to project on wherever they can. Oof, man, I guess I get it so early in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. All right, so we're ready and good to go. Got a box right there. All right. Let's go over and let's grab uh, the magic wall. Magic wall. Yes. And we'll start. Oh, we got. Wait, 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 wait. Too much. I hate it when the chairs are in the way because the chair kind of background stuff. That's why when they do this, they do this always with the background just flat against the wall. It's less of a chance you're going to pick up anything in the background. So let me see if I can just remove all this right here. I need to expand this just a little bit. Cause we got this back here. We just hit, hit all that. We hit the chairs back here. They're all hit. Make sure knock out the chairs. All right, and then we got some spots underneath here. Yeah, we got a few spots underneath there that are hit. I can't see my screen. Just want to get around. I don't worry about that. I can always put that back. I just want to get underneath here to make sure we got all this cleaned up. Uh, get the first size a little bit more. I don't want to get under the table. I want to that one to make sure. All right. I should have made the brush size a little bit smaller. I should have did when I was going to the red. There we go. bit bigger than that. No, they get that done. I'm just gonna nail that chair anyway and I close to as possible. And get these areas right here. Okay, a little bit. Some areas are a little bit harder. Let me go ahead and just bring this up just a little bit more because just not getting underneath here. There we go. I need it to cover it a little bit better. too far because I don't want it to basically start shooting outside the screen which it just did just now trying to keep it within this little black area because I want it to be clean when it comes up I don't want to basically have this overlapping or hitting below because that means the scanning it must it would have hit everything on the back of the table behind me that's why I should have moved the chairs and everything out of the way it's best if you do this but if you want good practice it's best if you can do this with optics in the background, which you can get around that, you can on your way to get doing a pretty good scan. All right, come on now. I don't want to get too much in there. Give me, give me what I need. I'm trying to inchworm this man. There we go. I know I'm hitting it, I'm not worried about it. I'm just trying to get it. A little tapered off a little better and I think that would be I scanned the boxes behind me right there didn't have anything in the background it makes it a little easier for you to get to we need to scan all right let's go back in all right 
I'm just gonna leave whatever. Next time I should just move the box out of the way. There are boxes right there and a fan right there which shouldn't have been there, but all right. Okay, so let's um create a surface right there. Um let's go in and we'll hit done. And then I'm gonna bring what I got from my library. I want that water right there, I want that right there. Okay, we'll open that one up. Is it going to give me a readout on it? Oh, that's freaking sick. All right, I like this. This is sick. Okay, we got to do this one. Okay, I'm going to publish this. That's going to look freaking beautiful. Could have did a little bit better right here, but I got I got time to practice. I got plenty of time to practice. See so these spots right here. That's why they're covering quite well. So I just have to do it again. And that's where I caught the back of the table. I told you I caught the table right there, and I caught it there by accident. That is freaking cool. I don't know what. All right, I'm going to do something else. Let's try it out. So we gotta do is gonna scan each individual block. Oh, that ain't right. It's my camera stand. Once it attaches stuff to everything. Let's try out. Um, let's see. Next, but did a plexiglass. Um, we definitely want to see that one too. Let's see if we can scan a piece of plexiglass. Oh, see if I can see the scan going on. That's the machine scanning. So I've had some people say, okay, so for your best scan, you want the surface to be white? No, you don't. You want it to be, um, you want it to be black. But keep in mind, as I told people before, someone said, why can't you use this black paint? You don't want to go down that road. If you use black paint, like I said, you're going to pull a contrast level, but you're going to, um, when you're going to put snow white images and stuff like that, white levels, that screen's going to come up muddy and dirty. So you don't want to go down that road. So at least we know that the screen campaign can be used for other stuff besides paint and projection screens. I can utilize it for 3D mapping now. And that kind of changes with a lot of theories on the naysayers just saying, oh, it's so dark you can't see it. It's so dark we can't see it. We're scanning off a black surface, which means it has to be to reflect some kind of white light in order to pick up.
Oh, I forgot to add too. I'm going to be. We're going to extend this special for the um. Cause that is, we sold a lot of that. I had to restock on everything, literally everything. So um, the sale we're having for the Supreme Black, which I'm using right now in the video, um, we have that at one quart for um ninety eight dollars. That paints the screen size of one hundred and sure one hundred and twenty and sixty nine and sixteen ten. That sale is supposed to end on the 17th, but what we're going to do is we're going to extend it to Black Friday. So there's plenty of time to place orders. I think I'm going to do the 3D face. In the in rear projection, and I got a curve scan. I'm actually going to be doing a curve today too. Let's see if I can 3D scan a curved surface. All right, we're processing. So we should be processing right now. We should have our image popping up in a few minutes. And there we go. Oh, we got a good scan too. We got a really good scan. All right. Let's see what we want to color in. My magic wand. All right. So what areas we're gonna hit? I think I'm gonna hit this area right here. Just want this area. I bring it up a little bit and bounce it out a little bit. No 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 no. I don't want all that. I don't want all that. No no no. Go back and hit this. I'm gonna take that out. I want uh oh, it's gonna give me the whole thing. How's it gonna give me the whole thing? Alright, I'm gonna have to paint it. Alright, take this out again. So I don't want this in here, I want this all of it out. How are we overlapping? Okay. So I should bring my brush size down to four. It all goes on your brush size too. Getting your brush size just right. So you can just hit certain areas that you need to hit and not overlap, which I'm still learning this on how to get the proper brush size. All right, go back in. Uh, all right, I'm going to bring it down to three. Three should be enough to get the brush size. This is a little too much. Yeah. It's two. All right. All right, I'll do that one. Should have left it at three. Should have left it at three. That's what I should have did. So this is just going to be a little bit more detail than the other one. I'm just going to have to. Alright, so I'll keep it at three. Alright, put this back over here. So I have to just basically be gentle about it. Spill over there, and I worry about that. Make sure all this is in red. All right, we're getting a little bit in there. Let me see. 
Ah. Ugh. This one's a little bit more difficult to scan. Let me get it. Let's try two. Just try two. Two is pretty good. Okay. It's a little slower, but. All right. Put that right car back in. There we go. Okay, and now I'll just go back and just get the rest of these odds out. there um i think i'm just gonna leave these two on the side i should, should just do all the way around then they, i don't feel like i want to do it because that's just a bit of a headache have these two sides right here and we're going to just scan from side to side i'll just do these right now i'm curious how this is going to look i can always go back create a surface done uh let me grab what i want from here let's see Try this one. Oh, that's the second one. <laughs> that's the same as the other one. All right, I don't know if I'm going to do back for a minute. Oh, that's freaking sick. Okay, I'll take that one right there. I'll take that one. All right, let's publish that one. So that's cool. I can I can have my thumbnails down there. So that's pretty cool. So I can just switch to which ones I want back and forth. All right. Here we got we scanned our two boxes on either side. So I got a little bit because some of the red pushed over. So I did get a little bit in there from the red pushing over, but as you can see, I got both these sides right here. So this is so I can pinpoint it where I want the scan to go. All right, I got to do the rear now. I'm going to try this, the glass. I need the plexiglass. All right, that was fun. Oh, wait, you know what? Should I do that? I should scan the whole thing and put a face on it. Mm, nah, I'll do it later.
Now hit that. Now let's coat it with some of our invisible technology. I'm going to have to scan that out. Well, there we go. Program shut down. Let's get in it get back again. That happens from time to time. Hmm. Let's report the problem. I think what I'm going to do next, since I got the doorway, I'm going to take one of those boxes, I'm going to tape some fishing string to it, and I'm going to have it hovering in the air and scan that. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I think, okay. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure exactly everything we need to do it. I'm going to do a hovering screen. All right. So we just hit skip from there. Project from there. All right. Just let that load. Chipper, chipper with Chuck, chipper. Done. I'm gonna show you a little cool trick. I'm gonna show you a little trick on basically how to scan a door, which is actually pretty easy. If you try to scan a door while the projector is sitting this way, that means the screen is gonna come out. Your projector screen is gonna come out this way, right? What you gotta do is you have to make it this way so when it scans. So you have to worry about tilting the scanner. You got to tilt the projector because the projector has to be to project this way instead of this way. So we're going to scan that. So what we got to do is take the projector, which I like the venue projectors. Venue projectors are designed to be turned on the side. I really not would be doing that with one of these projectors over there because you'd mess them up. But there's an option in my projector to be able when it turns on the on the side. It's actually an um, option there for me to be able to actually slow my fan speed down a little bit. That wouldn't be bad. Just buy a door with the frame and everything, put rear projection technology behind it, and just have a vortex. So you open up the door and see a vortex going through. Oh, man, I got to do the Stargate. I need to get the freaking um, special effects for that. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to go into a couple of sites. I'm going to actually, uh, stock footage is one of them. And there's another one I'm actually going to go in and apply and just pay for a monthly description and just basically just, um, start downloading content to use. So now I can upload any file I want, which I want to see a video file really bad. So I'm going to see if I can just burn me a DVD and see if I can upload it. Now, if I can burn a DVD, load onto a file, and then upload that into this program and actually project it onto a curved screen. 
That would be interesting. That would be really freaking interesting. It shouldn't be possible because I'm, actually now I'm doing, it does video and it does, it says it's capable of doing video. All right, process is done. This is my sheet of plexiglass right there, coated with our invisible technology. Let's see what we can do with this. Go to uh, Magic Wand. I want to go outside the area. Scan this water bottle. Let me see. It may have a little bit of a difficulty scanning through water. I'm going to need the two water bottles right here. I should be able to cover that up. There we go. Cover up in little areas in here with a nice solid red. Oh, a little bit off the edge. Not perfect, but you know. All right, let's see what we get with this. All right, just a little test here. All right, get a surface. Um, boom, 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 boom. we're done with that. And we we'll get something from out of my library. Hmm. So I always get confused on what I want to do with this. Let's see. I know, I know, I know. I'm just trying to figure out which one to use. I'll take this one right here. Let's see what kind of image it gives me. Oh, that's freaking cool. All right, we'll take that one. All right, we're gonna publish that. Let's see what we do with a piece of plexiglass coated with that technology. What do we get? Side. Of course, this should be a punch through, no problem. 
Are you freaking kidding me? Oh yeah, we, we got no boundaries now. We pretty much, we can punch through this. I know I can punch through that black technology we have. And that black technology is actually brighter than this stuff. So we can scan through a piece of plexiglass. And it cuts down on the lamp glare. Now this is the screen paint. When I told you, Sun Killer, this is the screen. And I'll put the I'll put the link at the bottom if you don't believe me. Any of y'all you don't believe me. But this is the sample sheet that was sitting outside. I took the direct hit from sunlight. This is it right here. This is at one percent done. We're at five percent somewhere around the time. And this is when I actually submerged underwater and shot images under a, in a fish tank. This is that technology right here. This is what I'm talking about, incorporating that technology over there, 3D mapping into what we have over here. So if we're able to make these screens look incredible. Just imagine the levels that we can go on this stuff right here. Oh, I want to do the 3D face. I got to do the 3D face now. I got to do the 3D face. I got to do that. That's going to look freaking sick. I got to do the 3D face. I didn't know it was going to show up like that. Okay, we got to do the 3D face. Now we got I gotta go out and I gotta put an order for some black plexiglass. Not I'm not I'm sorry, some clear plexiglass. I'm gonna do a coding demonstration. We're gonna do a black screen. We gotta do a black rear projection screen now. We have to. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be this is gonna be gonna have a lot of fun with this stuff. Okay, let me see. It just shows you the level. That's why I needed it. The levels of application we can use our technology with. I mean our screen paint, there's so many things we can do with. That's why I tell people we have to think outside the box. But this right here. Oh man, it allows me to basically explore some crazy stuff. All right, we're gonna scan this. We're gonna do the 3D face next. Now when you're doing larger surfaces, larger surfaces, surfaces are easy to code in. Um, usually I don't have to do the wand, I can just hit scan, and it'll scan it automatically from the door. It makes it a lot easier. But, whew. When I'm doing detail stuff like this, like little small objects like that, it has to be painted in. So the more you cover with the red, the better the scanner is going to see you. We're doing this next. We're going to use a great big thin screen. We're doing that one next. We're going to make a portal. Oh, I gotta look up a Stargate portal. Pretty sure I can find one. Special effects for it. Yeah, I need to pick up an AV cart. I need to pick up where I can put my projector, everything in here in one cart, and I can basically take it outside and do demonstrations. So I'm definitely gonna scan inside of my house. I'm gonna do something weird with that. Ooh. I can put a drag on the side of my house. I can make it go from one end and out the other. That's gonna be freaking sick. I'm gonna look that up. This is the reason why I need to go log on to these sites to have this kind of animation 3D stuff. I need to get all of those clips right there. That's what I need to do. So I can incorporate that into this. Because like I said, everybody I've seen using this, they're just you're still using the library. When I saw that option, I can go in and download my own stuff. I'm like, oh, heck yes. Hmm. I can download the logo to my company. That'd be kind of cool. Put that on black plexiglass. Alright, 
I guess about them. There we go. We're done. Now, anything that comes up in checker, that's window light. That's all it is. Anything that spots these little checkers right here and there, you'll see them right there, little checkers. That's the window light pushing in. There is an option on here. We can actually darken the screen to actually combat with the, the um, it's like putting shades on. Basically allows you to be able to work better in welded environments. But we're not going to use any of that. There's my U-line box right there. All right, so let's go over here and let's uh, the magic wand out. And let's start uh, getting this coated. It's a bit tedious, but like I said, it's, for me, it's relaxing. Now, you can scan flowers and trees and all that stuff. I've seen somebody scanning some flowers on a desk. And they have, do have an option in here that basically will allow you to be able to, um, the little dots that pop up on here that allow you to be able to scan, those, those, um, to read the scan. You can actually go in and manipulate those. You can actually move those around. To fit the edge in a little perfect. Cut my window a little bit there. And the water bottles are I shown to on that side. Like this just a little bit near the edge. Probably near the edge and right here. Just a little bit there. I'm going to repair that. There we go. This up for the face. Make sure everything pretty good. All right. Can't miss any spots. Okay. Clear the surface. Dump that. Yeah, Drag and drop an image. I'm gonna give me a face. the face right it should be all right uh, let's go to publish that would show much better if the surface was black so if I have the black transparent technology it would show much better Fantastic. All right. It's that invisible technology we developed right there. So we're just seeing exactly how much of this stuff is going to work with our technology. All right. Let's do the portrait screen. I like the one.
get some tape. I probably could get this to stick pretty good. Sorry, I'm doing something crazy behind you. Um, let me see. Hmm. I want to try this out now to tell you the truth. Let's see. Tape this. What I have, I'd wait to do this. If I tape this, I would be. If I could drill this, I would be able to do this, but no problem. All right, hold on for a minute, people. Something crazy here. Oops, my camera may fall over in the process of doing that. Let's just do it this way. All right, this is already curved. Nice little curve to it. I'll get a better job at it once I put those poles on it, but for right now, this is what I want to see. Let's see how it's going to react. do is I'm going to have to bring my scan down. My right. So if I can just get the top part of them good with it. Let's see if we can scan it from edge to edge.
off by a tad. We're down, we're down, we're down. We're off. Alright. I'm glad it messed that up. I'm gonna have to cancel that one. I didn't adjust my projector correctly and I was a little bit too far over. Let's see if we can do this again. No, I've got it. Okay. There we go. Let's do that one again. I was too far over. I gotta get the whole thing in there. Camera's on a slant. I just noticed that my camera's literally on a slant. I've been scanning the entire time. My camera's on a slant. Nah, at least I know it doesn't change anything. So this is the wallpaper screen. I think I painted it a week ago. Yeah. That's the wallpaper screen. Okie dokie, almost there. Alright. we go. Oh, we got a good scan. Alright, cool. The whole thing is curved right here from here. Alright, so I think we're just going to go in with the big brush. We're going to use this right here. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. So we can cover a good surface of this. What is this? This is the couch. I think that's part of the couch. Yep, it is. Part of the sofa. Got nice coverage on that one. That's a good coverage. I'm not worried about this because this is the couch. A part of the couch, but I can scan the couch too. I can take the couch with it. So 
I can just go in here and trim this up a little bit. Bring it all the way down to about one. I just want to get a nice trim. I don't have to put two in there then. Let's try two. No, I'm gonna bring three in then. Let's try three. Let's try four. Oh, a little too much. Three would have been perfect. That's just some of the couch I caught. So let me go and put this into three and then color this in. I would have a little more control with three. Now, what I mean by three, three is the brush size. That's all. Get a little dots out of the way. We don't want any dots showing up on the screen, do we? There we go. Got a nice pretty red. All right. Let's go pull our stuff up an image. Those are pinpoints. And let's go into my page because I want to pull up something from my category. Hmm. Let's see. What would look interesting on curve? Let's do, let's do a couple of previews first. Let's go with that one. Ooh, what about that? That's freaking cool. That looks really cool. We have to do that one. Okay, we're going to do that one first. Right, so let's come over here so you guys can get a look at this. Ladies and uh, just the ladies and gentlemen. If everybody watch this here. Okay, um, let's hit uh publish. comes the update. There you go. You can you can we can I can scan a curve screen. And to show you that it's curved. Here it is all the way around. It's curved. How beautiful that looks on black technology. Ooh, that looks beautiful. Oh yeah, this is definitely gonna be some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is gonna be I'm gonna do this later on. So I got some things I gotta do first. I'm gonna play around with this for a little bit because I gotta do a whole change up for that one. We're gonna do the doorway next. But I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more. We gotta add something else in here. Let me see if I can uh, put in a movie clip. So I'm gonna bounce out of here for a minute. I'm gonna put in, uh, let's put in a movie clip.
Alright, so just download a couple things real quick. This one right here, that's some pretty cool right there. You guys are on I gotta hold myself on the floor. All right, let's go here. Yeah, larger surfaces are easier to scan. It's the big ones, the smaller ones that become a little crazy. scan a fan like you know I can take the fan out you can take a fan apart take out the propeller or the fan whatever mechanism and coat that with black technology stick that back into the fan and basically um, scan the fan that'd be interesting I need a video file. I need a, a video file. I need to find one. See if I can upload a whole video. Because I saw somebody doing like multiple screens. They had like more big screen here in the middle and multiple screens on the side. And they were doing it for a wedding. They were doing the slideshows and the videos of the couples and stuff like that. And I was like, they're putting full length videos on air. You ought to be able to scan a movie. And it does have live. These cameras do go live. So that's interesting too. So just to show that you don't have to have the camera directly straight. My camera was on a slant the whole time that I was scanning. And I still got the image to pop up. So that's good. And the reason I'm doing that later because I'm gonna get a little rest. I gotta get back up, and I gotta basically finish mounting the gaming screen in the gaming room. So only thing I gotta do, I ordered some lights, but I gotta get the lights for the back of the screen, which I gotta order already. And then I have to order my gaming chair for that room back there. So that screen's gonna be in portrait mode, 106 inch portrait mode screen for um, gaming on Steam for retro games. And I gotta get the other PC and finish it off. Oh yeah, we're done, yay! All right, let's go ahead and get this done. All right, so we're gonna get that magic wand, magic wand. Oh shoot, we're in the wrong section. There we go, we gotta bring it up some. Here we go. That's better. So I need 
this section. I got to bring it down a little bit over here. Two, bring it three. That's better. Alright, let me just clean this area right here a little bit. Here, so make sure I get all my spots so we don't have anything pushing through the screen, give it a bit of a bad discoloration. Right there. All right, we're cool with that. I'm good with that. Got all colors all in. We're all colored up real good. For sure. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so we're going to go in and we're going to hit uh, surface right there, and then we're going to hit done. And we're going to grab what I just downloaded a few minutes ago. Let me see. I want the one I just picked up. Please tell me it went through. Right here it is, right here. I'm doing that one. Okay. That's gonna look sick. All right, so let's preview it. Get my keyboard out of the way before I step on it. Get myself a System 32. Nobody wants that crap. Is that cool or what? So pretty much what I figured out already with this technology is that I could download an entire movie and scan it right to a screen because it does accept video playback. So what I have to do is I'm going to do a test video, get myself a free sample of any kind of video, load it up on my computer and see if I can basically drag and drop that video file on here to be able to play it back because it does require you to have a pretty good sized graphic card. My graphic card isn't a monster, but for this setup right here, it's a DDR5 um, with four gigs on it. So it's the uh, low profile. Um, I got the 1050 uh, DTX. I'm not gonna do it right on curve. All right, well, I'm going to get some rest. I've been up since early this morning. I've been up since 4 o'clock. I think it's up my at 5 o'clock. I'm going to um, I'll probably next week I can start talking a little bit more about the blue, which 
Um, it's not going to have that name. It's not going to be under Supreme. It's going to be on a totally different form of entity. Um, and we're going to probably, I say somewhere around mid-December, it'll be available. Um, paperwork is, we soon will be finalized by then. And I just have to sign off on it and we're done. So pretty much you're not going to share the name as blue or anything else. It's just basically going to be the color coding technology that makes that, 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 that screen do that interesting little dance. It's going to be basically have a patent pending on it, which means whatever we drop into will basically share that patent pending. Yeah. But the thing about it is it can't share the same name as any of the older stuff that we have. So, yeah, it's a whole other story. Rules and rules and rules. All right. With that being said, thank you all for your time. Um, I'll be back in later on to do the portrait screen. I'm going to definitely play around with this curve screen a little bit. And I'm going to get on here and see if I can actually download some video files or basically burn some movies and put them on a file so I can basically see if I can do playbacks on there, which I should be able to do. All right. Thank you all for your time. I got to go and God bless.